Powered by Slipstream Autosport. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the Perth uh, Super Sprint for Via Supercars that just happened over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for the uh, heads up there, Daniel. But um, yeah, we're going to be speaking uh, on the uh, the Perth Super Sprint that happened over the weekend. It's just me tonight that's going to be uh, hosting the uh, pod. So feel free to uh, listen uh, on yeah, Spotify or YouTube. Um. Yeah, what a weekend, hey? Um, it was quite quite crazy. Um, I can't really uh, begin to explain how different it was considering the last couple of events that happened prior with uh, old Chevrolet Camaros dominating and then this weekend both Mustangs uh, had a victory. Uh, we had, uh, obviously, Chaz Mostert win uh, the race nine of the year, the first race of the weekend, and then Cam Waters win the second one, although... Mostert technically crossed the line first, but just had a, uh, a penalty following a uh, unsafe release in the pits. So um, yeah, we'll get to that in more detail. There's, um, there's lots of <laughs> lots of love here for Daniel. We do miss him. Uh, we he did very well last night hosting on the radio for the first time. So if you didn't check that out, uh, go check out the Motorsport Report. We filmed that session. Um, at the Radio Italiana in Adelaide, so followed them as well. They uh, helped us get that on 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 board. Really, they uh, yeah set up the whole thing. It was great. Lots of viewers now. We're live on TikTok at the moment as well for this episode. So seven viewers at the moment. Thank you, Greg. Just joined Jordan, Caleb. Um, yeah, lots of support. So loving it. Um. Anyway, let's get into the. Uh, the results, as Jordan said, that Nick Perker did well on the Saturday. But um, yeah, we'll get into that in a sec. Um, first, a bit of news that's floating around post um, Perth, um, and it's a bit of a controversial topic, as it's Peter Adderton we're talking about, um, who has come out on Facebook, and he usually does, with saying whatever he wants. Um, He's got a lot of backlash for everything he says, which I'm not really surprised about. I'm not going to go into too much detail over it, but it, it could be a bit of a rumor swirling around that um, he might potentially buy the Erebus team. I don't know what that would mean for Brody Kostecki. Probably not good. But um, yeah, who knows at this point, because anything goes with uh, Peter Addison. So yeah, there might be a... Bit of a rumor circling around that he might buy the team, as you know, he's always wanted his own team. And obviously, Supercars denied him entry to join the competition this year, I believe. As Barra says, a uh, good old Pete always has something to say. And this is probably the best thing he's gone off, he's done three um, posts in the last 13 hours. One was about Stadium Super Trucks, which is actually speaking of news, let's just mention that Stadium Super Trucks are back at the Adelaide 500 later in the year. That just got announced uh, this morning, um, which is pretty cool. And as an Adelaidean, I'd like to call it, South Australian, um, Daniel and I are very uh, looking forward to seeing those trucks fly around the streets of Adelaide uh, this year in November. Uh, anyway, back to Peter. Who knows what's going to happen with this? So let's just wait and see. So <laughs> Bryce goes, yeah. Three posts a day must be a quiet day for him. That's very true. Very, very true. Um, Jordan said that he stated that there'll be no motorsport involvement after 2024. Yeah, let's wait and see. I, I hardly doubt that. He's always got a point to prove. Um, so if he just pulls out of doing motorsport, I would be very shocked. Oh, no motorsport for boost, he clarified. Which th that, that part makes kind of sense. Because obviously what's happening with Boost and, you know, the Pole Award and not wearing the hats. Even though that's back, Cam Waters wore the hat. So I don't know what's going on with that anymore. No one knows. It's all a mess. 
Anyway, let's head into some results. Obviously, Super 2 raced on the weekend as well, and boy, did they put on a show, especially in the last race. Um, I myself wasn't able to catch the action, but obviously I've watched the highlights and whatnot. Um, the results for the weekend saw, uh, where is it here? Kai Allen win the first race uh, on the Saturday, and we had Zach Bates win the second race on Sunday. So both Commodores getting the victory. Um, it was a bit of an interesting weekend that ended in a rather dramatic uh, ending with a red flag with uh, Cameron McLeod flying through the air at the top of the hill in order. Yeah, the rollover was insane. Exactly. Yeah, at the uh, on the back straight there toward the last corner, that was very hectic. And, um, yeah, glad to see he's okay. Obviously, that's an incident we're trying to avoid in racing. Uh, I'm not going to put the blame on anyone, but uh, it could have been avoided, let's just say that. So, in the heat of the moment, at least no one was upset or anything. Um, apparently, uh, Cooper and uh, Cameron spoke after the race, and, um, yeah, no hard feelings or anything there, so... All good. Um, yeah, Bryce has mentioned Mason Kelly in the comments, and that's true. He had a quite a dramatic f- fireball, I would call it. Um, not sure what exactly happened. Obviously, it was some sort of engine failure. Uh, but I'm glad he got out the car when he did, because that car just erupted into flames, um, which saw a lot of, I'm assuming, oil leak toward the... Uh, Start of turn five and had a couple cars go off. It was kind of like that MotoGP incident at uh, Portimao a couple of years ago when everyone just went straight at turn two. Um, pretty dangerous. Um, luckily, no one was hurt, and that caused the safety car, and then that caused the following incident with um, Cam McLeod. So that that really took over. There wasn't too much race action, honestly, on the uh, on the Sunday due to these incidents. A lot of safety car and obviously the red flag ended it all. Um, interestingly, though, um, uh, Cameron McLeod, because of the red flag, they still awarded points for when the incident happened, meaning that uh, Cam McLeod still finished on the podium. <laughs> Something you don't see every day, a car flying upside down doing about three rollovers and still gets third. Um However, he's got a big repair bill on his mind because I obviously don't know if it comes out of his pocket, but you would assume it would in some way or another. Um, yeah, lots of damage. Not sure if the cars are right off. He spoke on Sunrise this morning because they were interested to chat to a guy that rolled over a couple of times. Um, he seemed pretty confident besides his headache that he's got now from spinning and rolling. Um, he seems pretty confident that he'll be back on track for Townsville, which is their next round. I mean, I believe that is just the... Is that the next round of the series? Probably should have double-checked that. But, um, yeah, I think that is the next round. No, sorry, Darwin. My apologies. Darwin is next, and then Townsville. But for Super 2, that is the next round. Unfortunately, they don't race as often as the Supercar series does. Um, the driver's standings, though, has... I believe remained the same with Kai. Yeah, Kai Allen still on top, leading the way. He's on his way to getting a, a back-to-back championship, which is quite rare in Super Two. Usually, the champ you know steps up to the Supercar Series. Uh, not so much this time, but um, I think Kai has a very successful future in front of him, so shouldn't, shouldn't be worried about that. And we have Aaron Cameron in second, Zach Bates in third, leading the way for Walkinshaw and Red United. Um, who had an unbelievable week full stop across both uh, both categories. Max Vidot, former Porsche driver, in fourth. Ken McLeod, we just mentioned, uh, is in fifth. Job Stewart, sixth. Brad Bourne, seventh. Lucky Dalton, in eighth. Jared Hughes, in ninth. And Jordan Sini, in tenth. Interesting, though, though, we had a bit of a surprise pole position. Where's his name? Brad Vaughan. He had the uh, pole position in the Sunday race. Um, so shout out to him because had a bit of an, a bit of a rough start to the year. I believe he had some issues at Bathurst with the car. Obviously, that's the only round that they've done so far. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, Bryce just mentioned that if Kai Allen does go back to back, it'll be the first time in Super Two history, which I do believe is true. So I think you're right with that one, Bryce. Uh, I wonder what PA announcement about Mobile X Racing. Yeah, that was the rumor with Peter Adson we just mentioned, Jordan. Um, be very interesting to see what uh, Peter does. Um, obviously, there probably won't be a boost mentioned into it, but yeah, be controversy nonetheless. Jordan's written here with the back to back to back situation. Oh, hang on. That, yeah, you mean Kai Allen. Yeah, he won Super 3, then Super 2. Yes, correct. Um, oh, wouldn't it be cool if someone won Super 3, Super 2, and then Supercars? Obviously, the only person that got close to that was probably Brock Feeney, honestly. Um, although, do you, comment this real quick. Do you think it'll count as back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back if Kai Allen won Supercars next year? Or do you reckon the two years that he had in Super 2 would wipe that. I reckon it would still count. So, yeah, I reckon it would still count. Anyway. Um, yeah, moving on from Super 2. It was good to see them back. Um, but... <laughs> Bro, pulling an Oscar Piastri. Yeah, very true. Um, it'll uh, yeah be interesting to see uh, what they do next time in Townsville. That is going to cause mayhem. Um, oh, sorry, Bryce just mentioned that uh, Brad Vaughan won Super 3. Yeah, you're right, actually, I believe. Um, that was a couple of years ago now. But, uh, yes, yeah, Akai can't do the back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. We'll double-check that. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, the Supercar results. It was a very different set of results this weekend with uh, Red Bull Ample Racing not dominating the weekend, um, which from a fan perspective was a good thing, you know, someone else getting involved in winning. And we finally saw Mustangs win. Um, not only did we see the Mustangs win, but two different winners, best mates in um, Chaz Mostert and Cam Waters. As hey, those joined. Hey, gone, mate. Good to see you again. Um. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've sorted the we've sorted the Super Three Kyle Allen issue. Uh, Kyle Allen did not win. Um. So yes, he can't do the back to back. I remember that now. That is uh, ringing a bell. Thank you, Bryce. Maybe he should be a uh, secretary from now on, Daniel. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah. So two Mustangs won on the weekend with Chaz Master and Cam Waters. Good mates. Um. They've had some history in the past, but this week. No fireballs, um, no incidences, we're all good. Um, yeah, so it was just nice to see that Chaz Mostert had his mojo back. It was very impressive. Um, he looked very happy and, yeah, can't complain about the weekend, you know. Uh, I think he had both, no, sorry, not, not both pole positions, as uh, Ken was in the second one. But um, I think race pace, he dominated the whole weekend. So... You know, that just speaks for itself. And not only did he dominate as well, but uh, teammate, um, Wood, he was very impressive. I couldn't get over how amazing he was. Ryan Wood, I keep feeling his name, Ryan Wood. Um, he was very impressive, especially on Saturday. The work he did to qualify second, uh, had a front row lockout for uh, Welcome to Australia United, was spectacular. Um, unfortunately, he didn't get to finish on the podium and getting silverware for his efforts. Um, he had a cracking battle with uh, Cam Waters in the last lap, and uh, Cam showed his experience there, elbows out, and um, yeah, he did unbelievable. But still, credit where credit's due, fourth place um, is yeah unreal for a rookie. Uh, on the Sunday, though, didn't have as much luck. He finished still in the top 10 in eighth. He qualified seventh, so... Not a bad weekend for him. As uh, Jordan is mentioned, the person I'm going to speak to about in a second, actually, um, Brody Kaseki. Now, if you caught our preview video, uh, which happened last week, I believe, toward the end of last week, we, or I, <laughs> wrote down and predicted that uh, I think that um, Brody Kaseki would be up there this week 
for a potential podium because last year he had a really good result. Obviously, we remember that battle with, um, yeah, Shane Van Gisbergen. That was not the case. He had an absolute disaster over the weekend. Uh, he did qualify really high up in the second race. I believe it was third, fourth. Yeah, it was on the second row, I think. Pretty sure. And um, But after that, he had an engine malfunction of some sort and uh, did not finish the race. And the Saturday race was even worse. He was the only car that got bumped off at turn one on lap one. And uh, yeah, finished 22nd. The 22nd and DNF for him for the week. Not looking good for Erebus. And Erebus as a whole had a weekend to forget. Um, yeah, Bryce is mentioning the point that I was literally about to bring up, so you read my mind, uh, Bryce. Erebus had the expect, or people expected them to be up there, but clearly there's uh, some sort of issue that they haven't yet resolved. Um, yeah, they've, they've had a they, look. They haven't had the worst start to the season because before this weekend, I'm pretty sure they were third in the championship as a team. Yeah, obviously we have the, we have the live pit lane now, so we can see week to week where championships, uh, where the, what the championship standings are. And yeah, this weekend is going to take a hit. Uh, I can quickly look at the team championships, and they're not third anymore. Holy cow! They're actually falling to eighth. They've had a disastrous weekend. We'll get to the championship standings later on, but yeah, it's uh, not good. Uh, yeah, Jordan bring up the point that you know Erebus have had a disastrous start to the year. They lost their uh, GMO. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, they've they lost Brody for the first couple of rounds. Um, Brody's number one mechanic as well, and pretty much all their sponsors. They did get new ones, obviously, but obviously that's not really paid dividends. And, yeah, we can't expect them to be as dominant as they were last year, which, look, I agree with that. Jordan made the good point. I didn't expect them to be up there again, especially with how they started the year. It was going to be a disaster from the beginning. And, yeah, four rounds in, it's uh, proving to be exactly that. Um, anyway, let's go through the top ten. Of uh, both races, I oh, can probably go through the whole field. Um, yeah, so Chaz Moss won on Saturday. Um, he uh, grabbed the 150 points. Will Brown finished second. He still leads the championship. Um, then we had Cam Waters in third. Speaking of uh, that, that cracking battle with uh, fourth place Ryan Wood. Brock Feeney had an interesting weekend. Uh, fifth place in race one. He wasn't as dominant as he has been the whole year. Uh, the Saturday race for James Courtney was unbelievable. Uh, in the Snow River, Snowy River Blanchard Racing Mustang, he finished sixth in the first race on Saturday. Fortunately, race two didn't go quite to plan. Uh, speaking of which, same scenario, Nick Perkat finished seventh in race uh, one. He made six spots up in that race too. Uh, eighth position was Matt Payne. He started eighth, finished eighth. Uh, Anton Di Pasquale had a, not a bad weekend. Um... He finished ninth. He also made up seven's positions as well as Thomas Randall. So those boys followed each other the way the whole way through. Uh, Cam Hill finished eleventh. Uh, he unfortunately lost five spots. Tim Slade, who was uh, celebrating his two hundredth round, um, he finished in twelfth in race one. Uh, then the start of the BJR cars under Heimgardner thirteenth. James Golding fourteenth. Bryce Forward fifteenth. Mark Winterbottom had a rough weekend. His qualifying performances weren't up to scratch, and he made up seven spots in the race, so it wasn't all that bad. Uh, his teammate David Reynolds was 17th. Jackson Evans, 18th. Macaulay Jones, 19th. Uh, Jack LeBrock, 20th. Start of the Erebus downfall. He had an issue, though, on the grid. Uh, the starter motor didn't work. Car didn't start, so he started last. Uh, did catch up with the field, but... As you can see, obviously didn't make many inroads. Uh, Aaron Love, 21st. We spoke about Brody before. He went off at turn one. Um, yeah, he was 22nd. Will Davison, 23rd. I'm not really sure what happened to him. And then Richie Stanway had an issue with uh, the car. I don't really recall what happened with it, but lost drive and then 
Aaron Love punted him into the wall. Look, I think it was accidental, obviously. It sounds like that Richie's car like shut off and then just got rear-ended um, at a very weird part of the track. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, not a great race for Richie Stanaway. As a race on the whole, it was it was pretty entertaining. It was more about keeping the tyres alive, that way you didn't destroy them. Uh, the whole weekend was pretty much about tyres, but, you know, Chaz dominated the whole weekend pace-wise, so, um, yeah, no complaints on his end. A few comments here. Weekend to forget for BJR and Team 18. Look, most weekends are pretty forgetful for BJR, except the tour ball. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, and Team 18, yeah, they didn't have a good weekend either. Surprisingly, their pace disappeared because they were pretty, uh, not dominant, but they were up there in the first couple of rounds. Uh, Bryce is saying Evans would be would be better in a top team if you look at his resume of racing. Yeah, he does have a very impressive resume. Lots of Porsche racing, GT3s, endurance racing, Porsche Cup. Um, yeah, he's done, he's done it all. Um, yeah, unfortunately, his... Uh, he didn't get the best mentor. Hang on. If Daniel's watching, he's going to comment. Guaranteed. Um, he had the mentor of Jack Smith the last couple of years. So, look. When you're getting taught by Jack Smith, you can't really expect too much. But he does have an amazing resume. Um, Jack Smith, we still love you on this channel. Well, Daniel loves you a bit more. Anyway. Um, <laughs> moving on to race 10, which was a Sunday race this weekend. Uh, different winner. We <laughs> nah, we love Jack Smith. He's a he's a legend. Um, yeah, Ken Waters finally, finally had the break that we'd all been looking for. Ken Waters finally won a race. No incidences. Obviously, we know that he finished second on the road thanks to Chas Mostert's um <laughs> penalty. I'm getting. I'm getting uh, crap in the comments about <laughs> Jack Smith. <laughs> no, Jack Smith is a legend. Um, yeah, so Chaz Mosser did cross the line first, but had a drive, not drive through, uh, had a penalty for something in the pits. He had a um, unsafe release with Thomas Randall. Um, so yeah, Cam Waters finally, look, he deserves a win more than anyone because the amount of Crap, he gets really um, on a pretty much week to week basis. He just could not catch a break for a while. Uh, but finally, gets his first victory of uh, 2024. And let's hope that it's not the last one. Also, we have a offer here in the comments. <laughs> uh, Jordan says he has a Jack Smith race suit, race suit for sale, if anyone is interested. I personally am not. <laughs> Daniel might be. <laughs> but, you know, Jordan, if you want to donate it to us, that's completely fine. We can share it. <laughs> nah, joking. Um, if you want a Jack Smith uh, race suit, feel free to message Jordan. Uh, Jake's joined. Welcome, Jake. Who do I go for? Honestly, I... We had, we had this a couple of weeks ago. Ever since uh, my boy Scott McLaughlin uh, left for the other side of the globe... Uh, I haven't really found a favourite to replace him. I was obviously going to go for beat, yeah, DJR afterwards, but yeah, not really impressed by them. Um, I love Chaz Mostert. Chaz Mostert is uh, probably my favourite, and I was really happy to see him win over the weekend. I just love him, really. Like He's just a cool dude and deserves all the success in the world. And Obviously, last year wasn't a great year for them with the Ford, but looks like they're on top of it now. And uh, thanks for the follow, by the way, Jake. I uh, appreciate that. From Daniel too. Bryce, no, no Triple Eight. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> uh, speaking of Triple Eight, thank you for that. Will <laughs> Brown finished third after a bit of a confidential, not confidential, not confidential. Not what I'm looking for. Oh my god, I forgot the word I was looking for. Not the word I was looking for. Confidential is not the word. Forgot the word. Dramatic. Let's call it dramatic. Uh, dramatic event with uh, fifth place Thomas Randall. Uh, so if you didn't see, Will Brown and him were battling from turn four to turn six. And um, yeah, didn't quite end well uh, with uh, Will Brown inevitably uh, hitting Thomas Randall. 
forcing him off the track at the last corner. And um, thankfully for Thomas Randall, he didn't get stuck, which means he didn't cause a safety car and get a lap down. He was able to continue going. However, did lose a place to Will Davison, who finished fourth. So show had a pretty good weekend. I think Will had an issue uh, the Saturday race, but... Yeah, fourth position on the Sunday was definitely a boost for them. Uh, yeah, Thomas Reynolds finished sixth, uh, sorry, fifth. Um, Anton Di Pasquale. Um, sorry, back to Will Brown. Will Brown did receive a uh, five-second penalty, but as you can tell by the standings, it wasn't enough to change the order of the results. Uh, Jake said, feel bad for Brock Feeney. Well, thank you once again. A lot of the comments are leading to what I was about to say next. So thank you, Jake. Uh, Brock Feeney finished seventh. So he finished fifth and seventh over the weekend. Uh, the qualifying pace, he was very bummed about in the interview after the race 10, um, so, which means the Sunday race. After the Sunday qualifying, it wasn't very happy with 12th. So getting up to seventh wasn't too bad. Um so yeah, he uh, unfortunately didn't have the weekend that uh, he envisioned and obviously dominating the last couple of rounds as well. It was weird to see them not, or him, he didn't get a podium the whole weekend. So yeah, that was a bit strange to see. So hopefully he can bounce back for Darwin, like Jake said, who is a Triple Eight fan, so understandable. Uh, a few more conscious, uh, comments here. We'll have an electrical throttle issue. There you go. Thank you, Jordan, for that one there. Um, Bryce commented, what was up with the press conference saying that Triple Eight are favouring Brown? I am not sure. I don't know much about that, but Will Brown is leading the championship, so potentially? Not sure. Um, Ryan Wood uh, finished in eighth place on Sunday. Obviously, not as good as a Saturday performance, but still, from the rookie, you cannot ask for a better weekend. Uh, Matt Payne finished ninth. He also struggled in the Sunday qualifying. A lot of teams tuned their car backwards, I noticed. Uh, Matt Payne was one of them with Penn Ryan, uh, Ryan Wood a little bit as well. Brock Feeney, definitely. The only team that went up crazy in qualifying was uh, the Show of E-Power boys. They uh, had a huge improvement from Saturday to Sunday. Um, also, David Reynolds as well, P10 in the race. He qualified ninth. Cameron Hill was uh, the only, or one of the only non-movers in the race, qualifying 11th and finishing 11th, which means I believe he finished 11th both races. Yes, he did. The consistency award goes to Cam Hill. <laughs> um, he finished 11th in both races. Uh, Richie Stanway had a better Sunday than Saturday. He finished 12th. Um, shout out to Aaron Love. Aaron Love finished 13th on Sunday, beating teammate James Courtney who finished 14th. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Aaron Love. He actually started 14th, so qualifying was great for him on Sunday. So he was one of the few drivers that I mentioned that improved their car. Uh, James definitely did not, from qualifying 7th to, I think, 22nd um, in on the Sunday race. Uh, a few comments just coming in now. Jackson sent a gift to us. Thank you. Percat, Matson Racing was one as well. What was one of? Oh, I went backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not as good as a... I haven't even got to him. That's how far down he is. Uh, yeah, he did not do well. I'll mention it in a minute. Uh, WU changed their strategy on Sunday. and Yeah, it would have won. Yeah, that the penalty, 100%. Uh, and Jake just asking if I saw the crash in Super 2. Yes, we mentioned that earlier before. Glad to see the cam... The cloud is okay, and hopefully we'll be back for the Townsville race. But yeah, scary incident. Um, well, the start of the BJR crew now, 15th once again. Uh, Andre Heimgard leading the way for that team. James Golding, 16th. Bryce Ford, 17th. Jackson Evans, 18th. Did he finish 18th as well? In the race? He did. We have two non-movers. <laughs> so Jackson Evans and Cam Hill didn't change positions for both uh, days. And I think Macaulay Jones as well. 19th in both races. There you go. Have some, some consistent drivers. Um, 20th position on Sunday went to Mark Winterbottom. I mentioned earlier, had a rough weekend, full stop. Yeah, um, 
do want to mention Tim, uh, sorry, Nick Perkett, and he finished 21st on the Sunday. Uh, milestone man Tim Slade, 22nd. And rounding out the field was both Erebus cars, Jack LeBrock and Brody Kostecki, not finishing. He was the only uh, non-finisher of the race. So there you go. Those are the results for the weekend. Um, a few comments coming in here. Oh, yeah, Perka had the penalty for spinning. Uh, yeah, Jack LeBrock, I saw that. Um, Bryce said, I know this one happened, but what if BJ went down to Super 2? <laughs> oh, sorry, down to a two-car team, would they be better? Well, I don't know. It would definitely help out uh, Brad Jones's bank book. Uh, Jake's asking, well, I didn't see what happened with Kostecki. Uh, if you mean the Sunday race, he uh, had an engine issue. So he actually qualified top four, I believe. Um, so it wasn't looking too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, ended up being bad. Anyway, let's move on to the standings. Uh, we'll start off with the driver standings first. Uh, Will Brown still leads the way uh, with his three victories over teammate Brock Feeney. Uh, Chaz Mostert leading the way for the Mustangs in third now. Cam Waters in fourth, so glad to see he's jumped up quite a bit because he was down the order for a while. Uh, Matt Payne in fifth. Nick Perkett still in the top ten in sixth place. Uh, the two Shelby Power Boys, Will and Anton, seventh and eighth respectively. Richie Stunner, unfortunately, dropped down. He was like fifth or something before. Now he's uh, ninth. Thomas Randall's up now to tenth. Uh, Andre Heimgardner, 11th, James Golding, 12th, David Reynolds, 13th, uh, Jack LeBrock, 14th, Mark Winnerbottom, 15th, Ryan Wood, uh, 16th, James Courtney, 17th, Cam Hill, 18th, Bryce Forward in 19th, Jackson Evans, 20th, Tim Stay, 21st, Macaulay Jones, 22nd, Aaron Luff, 23rd, and uh, Todd Hazelwood still in front of Brody Kostecki at the rear of the field. Uh, a few more comments coming in here. Bryce is saying, don't see it happening with the two-car team for BJR, but uh, you'd think the results would be better. Look, Tickford just did that, so I guess they could have just asked Tickford how that goes. Uh, obviously, it wasn't the best start for them. Uh, am I going to the Bathurst 1000, Jake asked. I was planning on it, but um, trying to toss up between that or going to the Grand Prix next year and seeing... Um, Lewis Hamilton and Red. Not sure yet, um, but we shall see. The Bathurst 1000 is on my bucket list. Maybe Daniel and I can do a podcast there one day. Who knows? Uh, last section of the pod would be the championship standings, which is also the uh, pit lane order for Darwin. Um, that'll see Red Bull and Paul Racing at the, at the front still. Uh, Hawkinshaw and Dreddy United. Now, I've got the standings from before the round, so let's see who's moved up and moved down. It's actually a good, good point to bring this up. So Red Bull haven't, haven't moved at all. Uh, Walkinshaw now. They were fifth, and they've moved up to second. Um, wow. Third is Tickford, and they were eighth. So they've moved up five positions in one round. That's really impressive. And kind of goes to show that everyone had a pretty rough weekend. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bryce has asked, how far did Grove Racing fall? Well, they were second. And actually, see, once again, the comments are leading me into the next segment. They are fourth. So not too far. Not too bad. Um, we won't mention Erebus yet. Uh, <laughs> so fifth place now is uh, DJR, and they were fourth. So they've unfortunately gone down one position. Uh, team 18, ooh, yeah, they've gone down a bit. They, hang on, have gone the wrong way around. Sixth place now is uh, Matt Stone Racing, and they were seventh before, so they've gone up this weekend, one spot. Uh, now, team 18. They were sixth, now they're seventh, so not too bad. Um, yeah, the next team, Erebus. They were third, now they're eighth. So they've fallen, literally. <laughs> um, 
BJR, obviously they got the two teams, but uh, they're still in ninth. And then we have yeah, Premier Racing and Blanchard Racing to follow. So that's the uh, that's the order. Jordan's mentioned here that Brody all weekend mentioned his car and career is 99, not car one. Read into that if you wish. Huh. Yeah, that's odd. I would be happy to be the champion. Anyway, that's pretty much the end of the podcast. It's a bit short. Obviously, just on me on my own tonight. Um, so, yeah, the next race is Darwin. I believe it's in another month, which is usually how the uh, Supercast calendar goes. Um, I believe that's all we have to mention tonight. At least, errors aren't the worst. Well, yeah, it's pretty hard to be worse than yeah, B- the two BJR teams, as in Blanchard Race. Oh, sorry. Blanchard and um, Brad Jones. Uh, yeah, Bryce, unfortunately, we didn't do the Nürburgring 24. Too many things were on at the same time. So I hope that the next uh, major event on iRacing, me and the Slipstream boys will be back online. Uh, yeah, so much stuff happening with the pods taking over now. Thanks to your generosity and uh, lovely comments in the TikTok, or on the TikTok. Appreciate the support, everybody. Uh, if you're not following us on all the social medias, search up Let's Talk Motorsport all over everything, uh, including Spotify as well for the podcast. Um, <laughs> Bryce is mentioning Max winning Imola and the 24 hour. The guy's unbelievable, isn't he? Like, insane. I think he, they said um, the team won Imola at 2.30 p.m. Uh, Italy time. And then he won the race at five. So, yeah. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's going to wrap up the podcast for tonight, the Supercars Perth review. Um, Thank you for joining me on my own. Um, Appreciate all the comments. Appreciate all the love, the few gifts we got as well. And uh, we will see you for the next episode, which will be the F1 preview. Once again, Bryce is helping me segue to the next (laughs) topic. Um, that'll be happening tomorrow night. I believe it might just be me again. So if you're watching this, you'll watch tomorrow and uh, it'll be the exact same thing. So look forward to that. Uh, Thank you for joining me, Alex, on the podcast. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.